one this morning, it took them a little while before they actually gathered up. Just before lunch, it was taking them just a few minutes. So I've actually got them into the mode of getting into their natural swarming instinct. Now, why is it that we can do this and not get stung so much? You know, anybody can come up to they you this. No yeah. yeah, yeah, so there's no defense mechanism. Anybody can come up and actually stick their hand right in this swarm and not get stung. You know, that's, I can't tell you that I haven't been stung so far. I have. Uh, Brandon got stung a couple of times, but we're doing some extraordinary things with, with them. But they're not inclined to sting. Now, there's a lot of ways that you can do these bee beards. I like to do it where we actually, what we, what we did, so you can just imagine that the bees were here actually clinging onto this with the, the queen cages here, and I would break the cluster, allow them to reform, break the cluster, allow them to reform. And then we were, to do this, we just took this away, broke the cluster, and then the person has, I have the queens on me right now. Let me start to take them off here. And then it's, uh, I've got both the queen lore and uh, the queen is in here. So they just cluster right on me. So it's a little more natural way of doing a bee beard rather than just letting them fall up onto you. you know, a lot of people do it that way. I tend to like it this way. And I think you get better bee beards this way. You get, you get more of a natural, larger swarm. Going on. Um, we did this in Ohio. And it was at the, bee, at the uh, bee biology facility, and there were a lot of hives there. We started out with about this many bees, and at one point I had four bee bikinis and three bee beards all at the same time. Because the field bees kept coming in, and all the pheromone that was actually going around, they were just able to, to wing on, and I just kept getting more and more and more bees uh, coming from out the field. 